Hello, let's talk today about the AudioSense model DT200. I also get their flagship uh, hybrid model AQ7, but I decided to save it for a bit later and start with more affordable model. Of course, DT200 was already released and review uh, was released few months ago and already reviewed by many reviewers, but uh, I won't forgive myself if I skip this model. And there are two reasons. First one, I like AudioSense as a company and I like uh, that they are not doing anything because of marketing. They really put uh, efforts into their sound tuning and they achieve the goals that they want to achieve. And second reason is because DT200 is a clear deviation from typical model, model lineup in this price range. It's a really competitive segment. I think that uh, new models appear in this price tire uh, about 150 dollars almost daily and for that price you can get like 35 balanced armatures per year you can get some hybrid models you can get some tribrid models some sophisticated uh, mumbo jumbo but AudioSense decided uh, to release the model with just two balanced armature drivers and you know it's like uh, you can uh, go to some uh, candy shop and get some expensive uh, or not so expensive but get some complex cake with lot of layers with lot of toppings and so on and you can get some cottage cheese put strawberries there and uh, i'm not sure which one will be more tasty and that's the case when less uh, sometimes means better and it's of course not the giant killer and it's not the model for everyone but you know it's the case when uh, sound tuning was done uh, with uh, some goals in mind and succeed and uh, we got a really good model so enough talks uh, i said about the price uh, and uh, sensitivity is 99 decibels if i remember right and the impedance is about 10 ohms or so don't remember exact figures, we'll see in the manual, maybe they print it. Uh, price $150 or so $140, somewhere in this range. I will add links to the description. And let's have a closer look. In terms of package, it's a typical AudioSense uh, package. Nice box with interesting uh, soft touch texture. And you can see the diagram showing the design of these in-ear monitors. Of course, Inside of the outer box, we will get the inner box. They put some storage pouch, or actually maybe it's pouch from the AQ7, so I'm not sure about this pouch, is it in the accessory set of this model or not. Here is the manual. So 99 decibels and 14 ohms of impedance, okay. Let me put a box in, in aside and inside we will get this nice uh, plastic case for storage, I really like it. And let's go deeper warranty card and ear pieces themselves so they use the same stable approach to packaging of their models need i will cut and speed up this piece so ear pieces themselves and here in the box set of accessories three pair of foam tips and three pair of silicone tips so in this price range that probably can be considered as a normal set of accessories In terms of design, they are great. So, AudioSense uses 
resin 3D printing and that allows them to create uh, really nice designs, good ergonomic shape, small size. So they fit, I think, into almost every ear. So no sharp edges, nothing like that. Just pure comfort. Spouts are well extended. They have proper angle, so they go deep into the ears, providing uh, normal sound isolation. It will be enough for a noisy street or for public transport. But uh, probably in subway or uh, on the plane, you will need something more isolating but I didn't test them in subway actually. Inner part is uh, semi-transparent. You can see that shells are really thick and uh, they build uh, nicely. You can see that they used uh, audiophilia grade uh, film capacitor. So I can see that it's a film capacitor and they mention audiophile grade on their website. And two drivers and with two separate uh, sound tubes they are also 3d printed they go into this uh, spout there is a leaf for holding the tip there is a protective grill so all that parts that i pay attention are present and actually build quality is good face plates are basic it's nice carbon metal logo so I think it's the case of the good design, so some mosquitoes flying by. And stock cable is also pretty nice. It's not, not some, some super fancy high-end audiophilia cable, but it's really good in terms of usability, in terms of quality. It's soft. It looks attractive, it has low microphonics, it's not getting hard when it's cold outside. So yeah, I use my fridge for that test. And let's, you can see it can be a bit tangling, but anyway. So it's the right earpiece. They use the MMCX connectors, really nice and snappy with good, well-defined clicks. There are ear hooks formed, but no memory wire, and cable itself braided of uh, four strands per ear. Nicely braided, metal splitter with chin slider, and goes braided down to the jack. So, in terms of design, package, exterior, and so on, and all that other aspects, they are, I think, uh, that they give everything one can desire. And of course about the sound, I read some reviews about AudioSense DT200 and sometimes it seems that uh, these uh, reviews uh, considering some different models because uh, many reviewers saying really different things about them. And uh, I think that it's a matter of fit and finding the proper tips because stock tips uh, won't fit perfectly for everyone. But uh, for me, the biggest uh, stock silicon tips are okay, but actually the best result I've got with uh, Symbio ear tips by Mandarins. So if you will consider getting this model, I really recommend you also spending, I don't remember, 15 or 20 dollars for a few pair of Mandarins, because they really improve the listening experience. At least for me, of course, I can't guarantee that it, it will be 100% uh, true for you because ear channels are different and experience also differs. I gave them about 20 hours of burn-in. There were no sound changes because balanced armatures are rarely require any burn-in. So probably they are ready out of the box. Let's have a player on the table. And let's talk about it. So, as I said in the introduction, this model really differs from the vast majority of hybrid and not hybrid models in this price range. Uh, usually modern manufacturers are trying to create either natural monitoring dry signature with highlighted uh, pseudo detalization or more fun uh, signature with uh, uh, accent on the dynamic driver base and travel. 
So this model is also V-shaped in signature, but because uh, of uh, just two drivers used here, they are more on the, uh, they are more lean and more natural and more resolving and less weighty. So it gives a really pleasant, clean, crisp signature, but without uh, too much highlighting this uh, detailization and so on. Let's uh, proceed step by step. So base actually goes pretty deep and it has about 5 or 6 decibels of uh, accent comparing with mid frequencies, but at the same time it's definitely not a bass heavy model. Bass in, uh, is on the agile side, it's a bit lightweight and it's uh, armature bass. It's uh, mo mo most uh, focused on the mid uh, bass, but uh, deeper layers of bass is also present, uh, but most forward part is mid bass. And uh, that means that it's really good in texturing, it's really good in representing small nuances of acoustic instruments, but it won't be the best fit for electronic music, for pop music or something like that. At the same time, of course, I did enjoy some uh, tracks by Juno Reactor, Daft Punk sounds really nicely. But of course, if uh, such uh, genres is a bigger part of your media library, probably you need to consider some other model. And also I missed a bit of uh, lowest bass accent with Massive Attack. But at the same time, tracks like Musica Nuda or some other instrumental tracks sounding really rewarding and really engaging and pretty comfortable, because sometimes in many hybrid models such tracks uh, exaggerate uh, acoustic instruments and they sounding bigger than they should be in the real life. And uh, as an example, I choose Musica Nuda, oh sorry, of course not Musica Nuda, I thought about Musica Nuda, but then I decided to take Scott Bradley Postmodern Jukebox great uh, project uh, that creates uh, really stylish uh, jazz, swing and other retro style covers of uh, modern music. And in the air tonight, as you can understand by the name, it's also a cover version. And here they used uh, acoustic bass, but at the same time they not uh, highlighted, they not uh, move it forward, so it's a really polite bass and many hybrid models just lose it because of uh, massive uh, uh, representation of lowest low frequencies and dynamic driver just not technical enough. Not uh, It's not uh, every single hybrid model of course, but many of them. And here you will definitely hear this uh, acoustic double bass and will enjoy it uh, because this model allows you to focus on every nuance of the on the every single particular instrument. As for mids, in terms of frequency response they are a bit recessed, but actually they are not sounding recessed because they have good resolution. They are not super resolving, not trying to be pseudo detailed like some models do. So they are not sounding too dry or too monitoring and they are also really coherent with bass. I'm not sure about crossover tuning here, but I suspect that mids and bass is uh, played by one driver and second driver is for treble. And uh, uh, mids are technical, but not too natural, too monitoring, and they're not focused on the micro detailization, they're not, not focused on the macro dynamics, they're not trying to highlight emotions, they're not trying to pick every single nuance and give it to you, so they are balancing well in between. It's a, you know, comfortable listening experience, great for long sessions, uh, when you want to focus on the natural side of things. Imaginary stage is uh, above average, not uh, hugely above average, not slightly, they are normally above average, so good three-dimensional positioning, not uh, something stellar, but normal staging. And uh, as an example for the mid frequencies, I've got Hof Ensemble, quite winter night, uh, uh, the season when this uh, album will be 
uh, actual is coming soon and it's the music to enjoy during long winter's night uh, sitting in comfort with a bottle of wine but it's not here yet but it's soon Tufsa dancer or how it should be pronounced I'm not sure and it is the case when track is recorded uh, so perfectly that it's uh, it's valuable only because of uh, uh, not only because of uh, record quality, of course, but uh, record quality also adding a new dimension to the quality of this track. And also it's uh, really good performed uh, acoustic, uh, mainly acoustic jazz music with uh, great realism and this uh, model sounding nice with it. Of course it don't show the full potential of this track because it requires something more expensive, but uh, sounding pretty enjoyable. And if you would like to listen this music as some background, it's really good uh, fitting that. And treble. Treble is a bit accented. Uh, some uh, people mentioned that they are sharp, but for me they're not even close to being sharp because here used nice Knowles balanced armature and uh, extension is uh, just slightly above average but of course they're not tuned to be super extended on treble it's just a good normal treble for this price tire it's armature it's a bit on the lightweight side uh, but at the same time it's clean and crisp with a bit faster attacks and decays but at the same time sounding pretty natural you know it's actually for me it's often an issue with uh, some uh, Chinese balanced armature drivers it's uh, not every manufacturer can make uh, sounding them natural sometimes they have that metallic sound and uh, here no sounding in a proper way uh, layering is basic of course uh, but for this price tire it's uh, good and they give a good overtone saturation and as an example, I've got uh, uh, Beethoven's Symphony number no. 7 uh, and as usual my rule of the thumb, if you need a good quality record of classical music, it's usually Deutsche Grammophon and it's Wiener Philharmoniker, Carlos Kleber, really good uh, reinterpretation, I really like them, I t tried few other records, but usually I am I stick with Deutsche Grammophon and it's uh, it's orchestral classic with a lot of instruments and of course a lot of them have that overtones going uh, pretty far to the treble domain and once again it's not probably the perfectly uh, unveiling this track in air monitors but they sounding uh, really nice uh, realistic and lifelike all that violins and so on of course they will benefit from the more extended treble but uh, in this price range it's a really good performance speaking about the pairings they need some technical players so Heidi's AP80, my choice, uh, and uh, probably there is not much sense in pairing them with something warm, but it's more of my, my subjective preferences, of course it's up to you. Not uh, much sense in using them with a smartphone, they just won't be resolving enough, but some mid tire or dub like Fio M11 or a Basso DX160 will uh, unveil their potential perfectly. Speaking about the compersions, uh, to be honest, uh, I don't think there is much sense because, for example, I don't know, Fios uh, FH3, they are more fun, more V-shaped, more weight on lows, but at the same time a bit less resolution on lows and uh, a bit uh, uh, more extended treble, but at the same time sounding a bit less natural than here. I don't know, BQ EYZ Spring? BQ EYZ Spring is more energetic, more focused on the macro dynamics, uh, more highlighting emotions and so on and so forth. C Audio L3, it's also different representations, they are warmer, they are more weighty, especially on the mids and a bit, uh, have a bit less treble. I don't know, maybe some other models, Hi-Fi Boy OS V3, they are more linear with uh, a bit more forward mids. So DT200 uh, stands out from 
many other models offering uh, technical but at the same time uh, bit uh, uh, relaxed actually not super relaxed you know it's technical uh, signature but uh, technical with a bit of relaxed representation at the same time of course usually these two words are antonyms but uh, if i'll try to explain that they are technical but at the same time they're not uh, uh, push this technicality forward if you focused on that you will get uh, good resolution and so on but if you relaxed they will have a pretty whole representation so uh, nice model worth attention maybe it's not everyone's uh, cup of tea because first of all because of armature base but for many genres and styles and for many listeners it's the model worth your attention thank you for listening and have a nice day